Right. The women were such a motivation to keep right. things balanced. Then, right, always. You know, and that's that's throughout history. You know, the women play such an intricate role in keeping the biggest monsters in the room appeased. And I think now the women are the agitators. Right. <laughs> of because this generation of young women. They're missing something very important. They don't want to be ladies. And when you don't want to sit like a lady, when you don't want to talk like a lady, when you're inviting someone to testicles you don't have and saying it with authority like you do have it, it changes the dynamic in how the men interact with you. You, you, don't, you don't feel soft. You don't speak soft. You don't even smell soft. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I can say it's because I'm a woman and I have nieces. You know, they would be mad at you guys for calling it out, but I could call it out. And I think that's such an important piece. That's what motivates men to be successful. That's what motivates them to not have the bang out at the party. You know, we got the girls here. You know, let's chill, let's talk, let's communicate. And I think... If there are any, those who have a voice, who could talk to the younger men, who could facilitate diplomatic meetings like you did so many times, because I'm sure you've done that many, many times, many times. facilitated a peace meeting, because that's what that is. They don't. But because the reaction, they don't respect your position the connections that you with, because now if they don't see it across their news feed, it's not real. Right. Like, you have guys call me broke and, yo, this nigga got no money, he broke, he this, that, and stuff like that, because you might not see the flashy jewels right. on me and stuff like that. Because you didn't get a diamond injected you know in your forehead. Right. Got them, but <laughs> you may not see them all the time. Right. You might not know I bought my house in a up to do Jewish neighborhood mm -hmm. in 1999. Mm -hmm. But they didn't want us there. You know what I'm saying? When they, when they didn't want us there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, and because I wanted my kids to go to a certain kind of school district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because mm -hmm. uh, I was tired of paying to go to parochial school. You understand? We understand. So why, we why, am, I, why well. am I paying to go to parochial school right. or extra Seventeen hundred a month. Correct. When I could put that into a house. Right. And that's a part of my taxes. And that's a part of my taxes. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. And my kids can go to a good school. Yes. You understand? So, um, what you were saying, and what happened was, is that you got to realize, and you could say this as being a woman, the women used to come to the clubs to see us. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. And they would get dialed up. Mm-hmm. You understand? They knew we had to have something on that was nice. Mm-hmm. Because back then, when we came into the club, you couldn't get in the club if you was looking like a bum. No. no. I don't care how much you paid. Right. No, we don't want that in there. Mm-hmm. You said, I don't care. You can have your jewels on with the T-shirts, the jeans, uh, uh, Jordan. Nah, bro. Mm -hmm. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> not tonight not tonight not tonight you understand mm -hmm. so the women used to come to the club to see us because mm -hmm. they knew we had the drinks mm -hmm. you understand whatever they needed or whatever like that the whole nine yards and we was going to treat them like women you was going to be safe and you was going to be safe mm -hmm. you understand I get and I didn't really understand that uh the girls think the guys are coming to the club, and we, we are coming for some fine women or nice women, mm -hmm. but it's about them. Mm -hmm. It's all about them. Oh, I'm a host. What, you selling bottles or something, Mom? What's going on? Mm -hmm. These girls start doing parties talking about, I'm a host. Mm -hmm. You understand? Thinking it was all about them. Mm -hmm. You understand? And when I seen that, that transition change and the women start being more disrespectful, I knew it was all downhill because once you start being so disrespectful and you don't know how to respect men, you understand? Because you say men don't have, 
know how to respect you. You got to understand men treat women the way the woman want to be treated. Mm -hmm. You got you if you got a fine woman, a woman who demands that respect, mm -hmm. most guys are going to give that woman that respect. It's in her aura. Right, it's in her aura. Yes, that's right. She demands respect. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I was sitting next. To, you listen, listen to me, and she said, "Aura." I was sitting next to Grant Hill's wife, and she was <laughs> yes, <laughs> Tamia. <laughs> Tamia. She was right in front of me, man. I couldn't even really look at Big Show, cause the aura of her was so great. It just had me enticed. Girl. And they still marry. <laughs> right. I was like, yo, that man's the luckiest woman. He's, he's the luckiest man in the world, bro. Because when a, a, a woman walks in and, and sh just around her, she, she just make men just bow down. That's what we missing. We yeah. missing more young ladies trying to be a woman like her. They don't see the value in it now. Because um, they could be their own bosses. Because they could be your own boss. I'm my own boss. I'm a, a, And our race is the only race of women. That is trying that. Just trying to and talk like that. And nobody else is doing that. Yeah. Nobody. Other no, women no, the other women in the world, in no, mm, not too much value in that. Yeah. I, can, I can achieve my education. I can achieve my career goals, you know. But their priority still remains. I want it all. I still want to be treated like a lady. And I want a husband. Mm -hmm. You know, I still want that, you know. And I think um, a lot of our young women, you know, the career, the boss, the, the quest to be a boss, it overshadows everything. And you forget just your instinct as a woman. Or what should be also on your priority list to know how to be treated. You worked at Sue's Rendezvous, another legendary mm -hmm. place. Came in contact with one of the biggest stars out of the Bronx right now, Cardi. Cardi you know? B, Amber Rose. Amber Rose was there you also. Said Gypsy was there. Uh, another Up and Rising star, Major Galore. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've seen her. Major Galore, she was there. Gypsy, Diana, uh, all those girls. I used to have to hold Cardi back at the end of the night most of the time. She was a fighter then, oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, she was a fighter. <laughs> so, and, but Cardi, Cardi had a heart of gold mm. because those girls who were stranded or didn't have a place, mm. she would open up her house to them mm. only to get talked about by them a couple of times, and then she would have to try to whoop their ass at the end of the night at the club. <laughs> For real, and I, I totally I, see that. Yo, know, I, I used to just <laughs> laugh all the time. But Cardi, um, she asked me one time. She said, "Gene, I come here on time, mm -hmm. so I don't have to pay the extra dues because you know girls pay the strip." Yes, and a lot of people. I don't know if people know that. I don't think to, a lot of people know. They that. have to pay the strip mm -hmm. at Sue's. You have to pay their dues every night. Mm -hmm. Every night you gotta pay. So she said, I, I come so I have to pay the extra dues because you come late after mm -hmm. nine o'clock, you got to pay extra money. Mm -hmm. So it was this one dancer named Diana. She was one of my favorites because I used to drive her or take her to her car mm -hmm. or drive her to places she wants to because she trusts the individual just not looking at them in that certain manner. You know what I'm saying? Always respect them as women. So Cardi was just, me and her was on the side of the stage and she said, Jean, I come here early at 9 o'clock every time. Mm -hmm. She comes here at 12 o'clock. She do two or three rounds, and she got five or $6,000. You understand? Easy. Why? Mm -hmm. Why, Jean? She asked me that. Mm -hmm. I said, it's about class. Mm -hmm. You see how she come in? Got a trench coat, got a bag about business. She come here and hit the stage, go through everything. Like She's not laughing, talking, and joking in people's face. She's showing the men them that attention. Mm -hmm. You understand? And she's carrying herself like a lady. Mm -hmm. You understand? Next thing you know, Cardi got into this dude, uh, what's his name? He was a uh, DJ. 
that he had started coming to the club. Mm. And then this girl named, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give y'all a jewel. It was a girl named Ratchet, was it uh, Ratchet? Ratchet something. Mm. Gypsy Ratchet. Ratchet, Ratchet Gypsy. Mm. She was Dominican. Mm. She could not do English well. Mm. She could not speak English well. Her name was Ratchet something on Instagram. Mm-hmm. She was showing Cardi now how she had guys coming to the club with her Instagram doing the stuff that Cardi started doing in English. Mm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The stuff that Cardi B started doing in English, she was already doing it in Spanish, mm. getting guys to come to the club. So she for, had her own following. She had her own all following. in Spanish. Right, in Spanish like that. Mm-hmm. Because she couldn't speak... I used to take her home too. Mm-hmm. She couldn't speak English that well. Mm-hmm. It was comfortable more for her to speak Spanish in there. Mm-hmm. She was showing Cardi. And Cardi started doing it in English. Mm-hmm. Talking, well, we say broken English. Bronx English. <laughs> Bronx English. <laughs> <laughs> so Cardi started doing it. Mm-hmm. And that's how Cardi started getting a lot of followers. Mm-hmm. And she started getting noticed and everything like that. Because she really didn't have no name when she came to the club. Mm. She got a name from a dude called Bacardi. Bacardi mm-hmm. was the guy who uh, did the bottle service, and he was the one to put the girls on stage. Okay. And Cardi asked her, "Yo, what's your... she said? She said you gotta have a name. What's your name?" She said, "What's your name?" Mm. He said, "My name Bacardi." Mm. So just call me Bacardi. Mm. That was her name, Bacardi. History. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> People don't. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. that stuff I learned. Um, other people, you know, Amber Rose came. She came uh, from Sue's. She came too. from Sue's. Uh, Kanye West came and I saw her one night. Got up out of there. Mm. You understand? Just like that. Yeah. You ain't gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> she you left the shoes on the stage. <laughs> Dude, I'm out of you know here. Saying? You know, so like it, it, Sue's Rendezvous had a lot of talent in there, and they had a lot of young girls that were going there trying to get their education and everything like that, but. Like I used to tell them, you know, listen to me, man. But you know how women is. They'll go and they'll make three or four thousand dollars and they'll go get that big ass Louis bag or stuff like that to keep their stuff in it. Mm-hmm. And they just gave Louis three or four thousand dollars. Now they gotta come and work for another night. Another two, and three another nine, two nine, nights. You know, like and, then, that, and before you back. know it, you in the cycle. Yeah. Because you started off with your plan. Right. But now your desires and your likes change, you right. know. I'm making this money, so, you know, okay, I'm going to tap into, right. you know, my earnings a little bit. Get the Sui bag, and if they're going to customize their body, right. now you're in a whole nother fix, right? right? Because a right. lot of the girls do get customization, yeah, they do. They do. you know. And um, you got to keep it, uh-huh. you know. And Kanye's not walking in, <laughs> snatching everybody, everybody. off mm-hmm. the stage. But when you talk about Cardi, I see... It's almost like an uncle. Yeah. You seem really proud of her. No, I'm, I'm very proud of her. Do you understand? I'm very proud of her accomplishments, her, her accomplishments and I, I'm a proud of that she became a businesswoman. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes you see her, and I know mm-hmm. that that's not her. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as she ain't that wild. Not, she was never like that around me. Mm-hmm. You know, she was in the working out of it. When she got wild, it was because somebody disrespected her mm. and she wanted to really fight them. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, she wanted mm-hmm. to really fight them. Like that girl who came on Tasha K and was talking about her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I knew the true story. Mm. You understand? This is the girl that started those ugly rumors. Right, right, right. Tasha ate it up mm-hmm. with a biscuit and honey and it later developed into a lawsuit. Right. That's the girl we talk right. about. Okay. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, Cardi's going to whoop her ass that night. Mm. I held her. Now, she was a girl from the club? She was a girl from the club. Okay. She was from the club. She actually was living with Cardi. Betrayer. Wow. Mm. She was living with Cardi. <laughs> I'm not even going go to go into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'm not even going to go into it. That was horrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm glad Cardi... 
handled it like a businesswoman. Um, and as a fellow Bronx bombshell, I'm proud of her too. You know, I love the fact that she went from the club to the boardroom. She's a brand right. now. She's a yeah. brand. Yeah. And um about to bring Reebok back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they Reebok gave a, is a, a multi million a multi million dollar deal. She's about deal. to bring Reebok back. Um which we used to love Reebok and it yeah. kinda, you know, dwindled, so that's yeah. good.